the valleys and over the hills. I know it had to be God. How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it through the rain? If you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. His amazing grace. God's grace. I made it this far, it this far. by the grace of God. It was God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. It's amazing. I 
Can we say hallelujah? <laughs> God is good. All the time, God is good. Amen. We're here to uh, go to the throne of grace, and we want you to, as we go to God's throne, to remember our sick members, all of our members who are sick, and we want to uh, remind you of our grieving families also to keep them in prayer, to pray uh, for them and pray with them. Uh, they are as follows. Deaconess Helen Godwin's funeral services is Saturday, November 4th at 11 o'clock a.m. here at First Baptist Church of College Hill. We keep the Godwin family in your prayers. Also, Deacon Samuel Jorna's brother, Lawrence Jorna passed, and that funeral is to be determined. Uh, we want to keep the Jorna family and Sister Mozella Hester's son, Ricardo, passed. Uh, we don't have information on the arrangements. Also, Deaconess LaShawn Connor's mother passed. We want to uh, keep her and her family in prayer, and I believe she's here today in service, so we are praying for you and your family. Uh, God bless you. Um, let us go to the throne of grace. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come, first of all, realizing that you are God and you have all power in your hands. You know everything, and you're everywhere at the same time. You are a great God. You are an awesome God. You are a God that can do anything. And Lord, you said that we can come boldly to your throne of grace. So Lord, we are here in this time of need where, Lord, we need you to look down on the sick, we need you to touch their bodies, Lord. Heal them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Restore them back to good health. We pray for our grieving families. Lord, we ask that you would just give them comfort at this time of bereavement. Give them peace. Give them assurance that you are with them and you would never leave them or forsake them. Lord, we thank you that you are the God that you are, a God that has given us promises that we can hold on to, and you said that you will be with us, that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, you will never abandon us, never leave us as orphans. So we, we believe that, and we hang on to that promise. And Lord, we know that you are a God of comfort, that you can comfort us in the time of sadness, the time of pain. So, Lord, we ask that you will just give comfort right now. Lord, help us to, to, to just love one another as you have called us to love. You said by this, all men will know we are your disciples, how we love one another. So help us to be true to that, to love one another. Lord, we pray for our young people. We pray that you will guide them, protect them. Lord, keep them safe. Lord, we know that there are enemies out there that would like to harm them, that would like to buffet them. But Lord, we ask that you will, guide, will give your, uh, your arms of protection around them. Be a shield of protection, Lord. Lord, we pray for those families in Maine who were victims of a mass shooting, senseless killing. We don't understand it, but Lord, we know that you know. And Lord, we ask that you will comfort them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, for this, this Congress who is so confused and so messed up. Pray that you would just, 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 just guide them, take control of their minds and their hearts that they would do right. 
by people that they serve. Lord, we pray for our church family. We pray for our pastor, our leader. Pray that you will continue to guide him, to lead him. Help him to be the good shepherd that he is and that you have made him. Help him to continue to serve boldly. Lord, we pray for all the leaders of this church family, that you help us to be faithful, Lord, to faithful in our service, to faith, be faithful in the things that we do, that we do it to your glory. We pray, Father, for those that are confused, those that are heartbroken, those that are, uh, are in need of a financial blessing. Father, just meet that need, whatever it is, Father. Just meet it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that you can meet it, and we're trusting you to meet that need. So, Lord, we just thank you that you've given us an opportunity to come together one more time to, to worship you, to, to worship a God that is a, a true and a living God. We just thank you that you brought us through another week, that you protected us from danger seen and unseen. We are here because you have brought us, and we thank you, Father. And, Father, we thank you for the, the songs that have been sung. Uh, for all the, the prayers, for all the, the, the people whose hearts are, are, are looking to your word to give guidance. We pray that you would touch the man of God as he come to preach your word. Lord, just help him to, to hear from heaven and to give us what you have given him. And that we will be uh, open and receive your word and be doers of your word and not hearers only. We just thank you for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this day. Thank you for another Lord's day. And Lord, we praise you all throughout this day. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our scripture reading this morning will come from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'll be reading out of the NIV. For those of you who'd like to follow along, if you have another translation, you just come on with us and we'll get there together. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 1 says, as for other matters, brothers and sisters, we instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this matter, no one should wrong or... Wait, 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 let me back up. And that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more. And to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business. Wait a minute. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed 
about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Amen. God's word for God's people. Amen. Love the Lord, grow the believer, and reach the world. That's what we intend to do. Good morning, everybody. How y'all this morning? Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Some of us haven't clapped yet today. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Is there anybody visiting with us for the first time? If you're here, hanging out with us for the first time, just raise your hand. I'm not going to make you stand up and talk, giving honor to God, who is the head of my, all of that. God bless you. Just us family today. Amen. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's just family. We can hang out and have a family reunion. Amen. Amen. If you're watching at home and this is your first time, 
uh, watching online, I want you to go to our website, www.fbcch.org, and go to the Visit Us tab. There's some information there. If you would go ahead and click on it and uh, fill out that information, we just want to stay in touch with you. If you are visiting with us for the first time, down in that chat box, I want you to write, I'm new here, and we're going to try to hook up with you that way. All right? Amen. Come on, First Baptist, let's give our guests online a new hand, I mean, a big old hand clap of praise and a big welcome. I don't have very much today. The only thing I want to encourage you, church conference is Thursday. Church conference is Thursday at 7 p.m., Thursday, November the 2nd at 7 p.m. It's going to be on Zoom, and I don't see that Zoom information, so call the church, and we'll have that Zoom information for you. Call the church, or you're going to get a, uh, if you're all signed up with our, on our website in our directory, we're going to send you a flock note. Uh, we'll send you some, some type of message letting you know what the Zoom information and login is. If you don't get it, call the church, and we'll make sure that you're able to attend that meeting. We'll be talking about uh, the budget. I want to, first of all, thank the budget committee, amen, for all their hard work on the budget. And they did a great job putting that thing together and taking care of God's business for the church. And we want to thank them for taking out of their time and out of their schedule for the many hours that they put in to make this budget happen. And I want to thank all of the ministry heads for making sure that you did what you did and turned in your information on time. Amen. Amen. We, we are so grateful for all of you for doing that so that we can get what we need to do to get done. I got one birthday today, and I don't see him here today. And so we're going to give a shout out to Brother Reuben Yeoman. Brother Reuben Yeoman is celebrating 87 years today. Amen. Amen. So if you uh, know Brother Yeoman, if give him a call. Let him know we're thinking about him, praying with him, and tell him happy birthday. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning, choir. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Good to see you all this morning. Can I see some pearly whites? Just give me some pearly whites for just a moment. Great to have each and every one of you in service today. I want to piggyback just a little bit on Reverend Jarnigan's thank you to the uh, Budget Committee for putting together uh, our next year's proposed budget. It's not uh, voted on and acted yet. And I want to just go a step further, and I want to say that I would love to have my Budget Committee uh, have a real easy job of putting the budget together. And one way that that could happen is if you start tithing. Amen? <laughs> Some of y'all that went over your head. Some of y'all that went over your head. But if you, if you do what you need to do, that it makes their job a whole lot easier. You know, uh, they, they, they don't have to cut corners, and they don't have to scrimp and scrunch and move stuff around. Uh, I just want you to go ahead and just do what God asked you to do, and that is to be a cheerful giver into the work of the Lord. But uh, they, they have worked hard. We do meet to take our final conference uh, this week. And in this final conference, the budget's approved, ministry uh, calendars are approved, uh, new nominations, if there are any, because we're in the middle of our cycle, but there may be some, those will be approved this week as well. So we want to encourage you, if you're a member of First Baptist Church of College Hill, then you are um, eligible to be a part of that meeting, and you, like everyone else, have a vote. And so what, what we do for the ensuing year comes out of what we put on the table for conference and that which is voted on collectively by the church, and then we move ahead. For some of you that are new to, to the Baptist way, that uh, we are what we call a congregational-led uh, church in terms of our uh, decision-making, and so decisions are made uh, in conference, and so don't sit home complaining about what's going on in your church, but you never show up at conference. All right, so if you don't show up at conference, uh, pastor won't hear you uh, when you start complaining because pastor's going to ask you a question. Were you at conference? Did you raise that issue at conference? Did, no, I don't know. I thought conference was something else. Well, it's the business meeting of the church, and we want to invite you to come and be a part of it. Now, on the 12th of November, our very own uh, Reverend Michael Neely, who is now pastoring New Millennium Community Church, will be celebrating their church anniversary and pastoral anniversary. 
and I want you to join me. I'll be the, the guest preacher for that occasion at 4 o'clock, November the 12th. A choir will be going along, and we want to invite the church family to come. Uh, tag along. That, that's what, now, I'll tell you, let me throw this at you all young folks. See, this was one of the things that I loved when we had our, our, our older folks. See, they, they knew how to follow the pastor. When, 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 when pastor traveled, they knew, how to, they knew how to follow the pastor. But y'all young folks... Y'all don't know how to follow the pastor. And so we needed a new training at First Baptist Church of College Hill. And so when pastor says, I'm going to preach, I need y'all in tow. I need y'all over at there showing up and showing out. All right? Don't make, don't make me go over there by myself. Nothing worse than the pastor showing up and he by himself. Nobody comes. Uh, but we want to celebrate with Reverend Neely and his congregation. It's, it's a great time of fellowship and and, and ministry and to encourage them in the work that God has called them to do. But that's November 12, 4 p.m. at New Millennium Community Church. And uh, if you knew, you can go and get, you can Google the, the address, uh, but we'll give it to you uh, uh, closer to the date. And we invite you to come and be a part of it. Um, something was on my heart this morning, and that was during the prayer time. And it was for caregivers. Our churches just celebrated 119 years. There's a section of our church that is not in church. They're senior citizens, homebound, many of them in situations where they're being cared for by loved ones. And we don't think sometimes about the stress and the burden of caregivers those that have to deal with parents that are unable to walk and get around, those that are dealing with parents with dementia, those that are dealing with, with all kinds of other issues. Uh, we don't know all that goes on behind closed doors, but my heart was just really touched this morning that we remember to pray for caregivers because they can get stressed to the max. You know, uh, our loving parents sometimes because of changes in, their, in their, their physiology and their mental state can become truly a burden uh, on those that have the care of those loved ones. And if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. And so I just want to remind us as we pray, not just today and tomorrow, but as we pray, remember as we pray for the sick and shut in, pray for those that care for them because it can be a tremendous, tremendous burden. And so I just want you to know that. And I know that many of them do it, and they do it out of the love of their hearts. They do it because it's the right thing to do. But because it's right, doesn't make it easy. <laughs> All right? Uh, and sometimes it's, it's hard, but you do it anyway because it's needful. And so I just ask you to keep that in mind. And finally, uh, we want to just give an opportunity at this time for giving. At First Baptist Church of College Hill, we survive on the gifts of the members and those that contribute to um, through tithes and offering to the ministry here at First Baptist. And so if you want to give today online, go to our church website, and you can click on the giving button and follow the instructions there. There's also an app called Vanco Mobile. If you're new and you want to download that to your device, you can do it, or you can text to give, and that also is on the, um, the screen. I'm not sure if it's where we can find it on the website. But also, you can send a check of money order here to the church. If you're in sanctuary today and you want to give a physical uh, gift, in the pew in front of you, they're giving envelopes. You fill that in, place your, your gifts in there, fill it out. And as you leave today, beside each door, there are giving boxes on the walls. Just uh, drop your gifts in that. And if you can't figure it out, just ask one of our ushers. They're dressed in blue tops today. Ask one of them, and they can help you. Or any other member. Just say, listen, show me where I can deposit my giving, and we would uh, be appreciative of that. So let's just pray and ask God's blessing on the gifts. Father, we thank you so much for your grace. We sang that song, Lord, but for your grace. We'd be lost, but for your grace. And so, Father, I thank you today for those that have sown into this ministry. Because, Father, you say in your word that as a man purposes in his heart, so let him give. And so we do so not grudgingly, but we do so with a heart filled with gratitude because 
You saved us, Lord, when we were lost, called us to yourself, and you nurture us in our most precious faith. Father, for those that are unable to be in the sanctuary today, we pray for them as well as they watch online. God, we ask that you would fill their spaces with the love of Jesus. And Father, we would be careful to give you the praise, to give you the honor, to give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I thank the Lord today for the help that he gives here at First Baptist. And so our music ministry will come in just a moment. Uh, after they're done, uh, I want to welcome to the pulpit today Reverend Lawrence Glover, who will come and minister the word. And I want to thank him for his faithfulness. I want to thank him for his um, integrity of life and his uh, faithfulness when I call on him. He's one of my go-to fellas when I need somebody to go and stand in. And uh, when I call him, I, I don't think he's ever turned me. He might have turned me down one time, but I think he might have had a date with his wife. So. <laughs> but uh, I, I thank the Lord for his, his faithfulness and commitment uh, to the Lord. So the choir will come at this time, and following them, the next voice you hear will be that of Reverend Lawrence Glover. I want to uh, inform the church. We just got a message just now. I know we just celebrated Brother Reuben Yeoman birthday. Uh, just got a message. Brother Ro Reuben is in the hospital. And so we want to lift him up in prayer even now. Amen. He said, oh no, oh no, we've already paid the price, I was blind, but now, I thank God I can see, cause grace and mercy just came along, it came along, and rescued me.
say that one more time. Justice demanded that I should die. But grace and mercy said, oh no, oh no. We've already paid the price. I was blind, but now, thank God I can see. Cause grace and mercy came along, it came along and rescued me. Good morning, church. Good morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This morning, first of all, let's pray. Gracious Father. We come to you once again, thanking you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, for blessing us all week. Thank you for traveling grace. And God, we just want to say, bless the word. We pray, God, that it would touch some lost soul. We pray, God, that it would encourage our congregation and our listening audience. And we just thank you, God, for all of your many blessings. Because if it had not been for you, we wouldn't be here today. Bless the pastor, ministry staff, our congregation, our deacons, our listening audience. Have your way, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say amen. 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 Our scriptures today, coming from the book of Thessalonians, 
chapter 4. It's talking about how to please God. And that's one of the points that I would like to make. It's Paul talking to the Thessalonians. Amen. And he was teaching them and somebody asked him a question concerning those that are asleep. And he changed his point or his topic to answer that question. Now in this chapter, the apostle proceeds to extort in general to the performance of good works. Particularly to the purity of life, to brotherly love, to quietness, diligence, and industry in several callings of life, and not to mourn in excessive and immoderate manner for deceased friends. which leads him to say something, some things concerning the second coming of Christ and the duties urged to were the commandments of Christ and which the apostle have given them and they had received and were well acquainted, particularly the apostles' exhorts to abstain from fornication and all uncleanness. Since it is a dishonoring, since it is a dishonoring the body of man, acting the uncleanness and to despise this exhortation is casting contempt not upon man, but God himself. Brotherly love is the next thing extorted to which seemed needless to write about. Since in regeneration, these saints were taught to exercise it. And in it, 1 Thessalonians 4, 9, and 10, and to study peace and quietness and to be industrious in their business, that so they might live an honest life among dear friends and relations by death, and were ready to exceed due bounds in their sorrow for them. Our scripture starts out in Chapter 4. Four topics I want to particularly talk about. First, our message is entitled Get Right Church and Let's Go Home. Amen? Amen. Think about the topic Get Right Church. See, even the church have things that we need to get right. And we can't get right, we can't go home until we get it right. Amen? Right. The first point that I'm going to talk about is to live to please Jesus. See, if we live to please Jesus, then we'll think about the things that we do before we do them. Amen? The second point that I'm going to talk about is say live a quiet life. In other words, God is telling us in his word that we can't be in everybody else's business. Amen? 
and live a quiet life. Amen? The third point is to walk in, in obedience and be satisfied. Amen? Walk in obedience and be satisfied because we're going to see that some, some of us are never satisfied. We see that commercial on TV to my more, more, more. Some people never get enough. Amen? They can't see how blessed they are. Amen? And so we want to talk about how to walk in obedience. Because when you walk in obedience, you will be satisfied. Amen? And one other point that I, I want to make if we have time is, and be prepared for the imminent and inevitable return of Jesus. Amen? Because in Thessalonians, at this particular point, Paul is talking about the beginning of the rapture. That question concerning the dead is the beginning of the rapture. Amen? And so we want to deal with all of these things in our scripture today. And so let us begin. First, uh, Paul said in verse 1, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that you as you have received of us how you ought to walk and please God. So, you, so ye will abound more and more. Now the first thing he says is that you, brethren, I beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that you have received of us how ye ought to walk and please God. Now, Paul, just like us, most of us, we've been taught how to live. We've been taught how to walk right. Amen? And how to please God. That's the first thing Paul talks about. That's very important. That we walk right and please God as followers of Christ. Amen? See, most of us have professed to be followers of Christ. There's old saying, you will know the tree. Say so what? By the fruit it bears. Amen? Because we got a lot of people saying a whole lot of things. Amen. But you will know the tree by the fruit it bears. <laughs> the old saying about a duck. If it quite like a duck, walk like a duck, then it's a what? It's a duck. Amen. See, you don't have to show or tell people what you do. All you got to do is walk the walk. People are notice something about you, and then they are wonder, what is it that he or she act that way or do so and so? Amen? That's why Paul is telling the Thessalonians, you know how you ought to walk and how you ought to Please, God. See, 
We live in a world today that everybody is trying to please somebody. But the only thing that we should be trying to do as a believer in Christ is to please Christ. Amen? Because as I said, this is the beginning of the rapture. Amen? Paul goes on to say, so ye would abound more and more. See, when you act like or live like or you live to please God, it says that you would abound more and more. In other words, God will bless you more and more. Amen? When you do right. Now, we're going to talk about when you do wrong. Amen? But Paul is starting off talking about what to do so that you can abound more and more. Amen? This is not a shouting message, but this is one that we all need. Let's get right. Get right, church, and let's go home. Amen? Because just like the Thessalonians, they wanted to know. See, in their mind, they was thinking that they wasn't going to see their loved ones anymore if the rapture occurred. But Paul is going to later clarify that. Amen? That their relatives that's already gone is going to be caught up. Amen? He's going to get them first. Then we're going to be caught up with them. But this is that we got to get there first. Amen? We can't get to B before, we can't get to C before we get to A and B. Amen? We got to be patient. We got to do it right. We got to be obedient to the word of God, especially, particularly if we call ourselves the saints, saints of God. Amen? Because see, Jesus already dealt with that. Now, everybody that say, Lord, Lord, is not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen? And so I don't want to be an ain't. I want to be a saint. Amen? When that day come, I want to be ready. And if you look around, no man knows the day or the hour, but if you look around, it won't be long. Because what is being predicted in Mark and all throughout the Bible is already occurred. Amen? So get right, church, and let's go home. Amen? See, we ain't coming in here for uh, the wrong reasons. We've come in to praise God. God said that my house should be what? A house of prayer. See, we come every week to the house of prayer so we can get, the, get extra strength. We can fellowship with our brothers and sisters and get strength from one another so that when we go back out there in that world, we ready. We got the whole armor of God on. Amen? Amen. I'm taking my time because we don't want nothing to be overlooked or misunderstood. Amen? The Bible tells us in all I get and get what? Talk to me. Amen. So we want to make sure that we all on the same road. Amen? Going on a little further, it says in verse 2, For you, for ye know, what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. See, the Thessalonians already know. Paul was teaching them, amen, the, the, the things of God, how to be saved and how to walk and please God. And see, this is our number one, that's to be number one priority, to please Jesus. Our life should be 
a life, an example for others. Something in your life should exhibit or shine of Christ. We should be Christ-like, amen, somewhere in our walk. David said, create in me, Lord. A what? Clean what? Clean a clean heart. That's what we all, he already done it. We all need a clean heart because we can't continue to live any kind of way. Amen. Your spirit, the Holy Spirit, that spirit of God that exists within us now, it should not like the things that it used to like. Amen. Light and darkness can't exist. Something should, one or the other, should disappear. The old things that we used to do, we shouldn't do no more. Amen? We shouldn't even want to be around it. Amen? Get right, church, and let's go home. Amen? See, we can't have stuff in walking for God. In other words, you can't be lukewarm. You're either hot or you're cold. You can't straddle the fence. You can't be hot today, and then tomorrow and the rest of the week you're lukewarm. No, no, no. God said either be hot or cold. You can't be lukewarm because if you do, I'm going to do what? I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Amen? Get right, church, and let's go home. See, the devil don't want you to go home because he already knows where he's going. Amen? And he's trying to take as many people to hell that he can. You know, as I was studying this lesson, it was talking about when the rapture, when Christ come back and the rapture, because right now we had the beginning. Amen? 3.5 years, it's going to be peace. And then we're going to have the, uh, another 3.5. Then Armageddon. And after this Armageddon, Christ is going to come. But we want to be ready. We might not be here. We don't know. Amen? But the signs of the time are everywhere. Going on a little further. Verse 3, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Amen? Amen. I'm going to go there. Because I'm going to talk about myself. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to talk about myself. See, that's, that was my downfall. Amen? amen? And thank God, God saved me. And I know if God can save me, God can save anybody. Yeah. Amen? See, we all have sinned. We come short of the glory of God. Drugs, alcohol, all that other stuff, that didn't bother me. But fornication. I had, remember the Bible talks about if one, if one of your eyes calls you to sin, pluck it out. Because it's better to make it to heaven with one eye than to go to hell with both eyes. Amen? See, we got to get right, church, in order to go home. You ain't going home no any kind of way. See, it's either, there ain't but two places you can go. Heaven or hell. There's no other place. Amen? And you got to live right. You got to be Christ-like. You got to have that new heart that David was talking about. Amen? Get right, church, and let's go home. But see, you don't have to do that by yourself. That's why Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit. 
We got the power. You just got to let the power take control. God has given us the strength, a way out. All we have to do is walk therein. David said, give me a clean heart. Say, oh, you can, the Bible says if you ask, you'll receive. If you knock, the door will be open. We, we got everything we need. No excuse for nobody to go to hell. You know, I hate that term when people say, he's sending people to hell. No. If you go to hell, you're sending your own self to hell. God giving you a way out. If you go to hell, you're going to hell on your own accord. God don't send nobody to hell. It is written. Everything that we need, God got it. Let's get back into the word. <laughs> but get right, church, and let's go home. Because there's no other way you can go home. Amen? We got to have Christ, but we got to be a follower of Christ. You can't straddle the fence. Amen? Amen. Going on a little further, it says, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Sanctification means you got to turn around. You got to clean yourself up. You, your life has got to be turned around. Look at Paul. Paul went around killing God's people, arresting them, putting them in jail. But on the way to Damascus, God changed him. And just like Paul, God can change you too. Amen? If you let him. See, he give us all free will. None of us can say that I didn't have a chance. We got a chance. Look at all the years God is allowing us to live. Blessed us. Kept us. Keeping us. In spite of all of the things we still not doing. He still loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever what? Believe. Believeth in him shall not what? Perish. But what? Perish. Now what more do you need to know? Amen. Amen? That, that's the whole story right there. Amen. He died for our sins. Forgave us of our sins. And all we got to do is do a 360 if you're still out there. If you're still not living right, you still got a chance. Amen? As long as you like, got life in your body, you got a chance. Right. It's never too late until, I'm not going to say it, to the breath of life is taken away. Amen? Amen. That's the truth. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Because we're living in the last days. Look at what's going on around the world. Men killing their mothers. Children killing their parents. Senseless killings every day. But the Bible talks about that. What's going to happen? Look at the weather conditions. Look at the government. All messed up. Israel in a war. All of these things are being predicted, has been predicted years ago, but it's coming to pass today. Amen? And the Bible tells us when you see these signs, so you don't, nobody knows, but the time ain't long. Amen? Get right, church, and let's go home. Because 
I don't want to be the one left behind when Jesus do come back. Because he done told us it's going to be two in bed, two in the field, two everywhere. One going to be taken up and one going to be left behind. I don't want to be the one left behind. Amen? Praise God. We sung that song, It Won't Be Long. But this is what we have to do. We have to be obedient to God's word. Going on a little further, it says, the, that, very, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Amen? You know, I see young people. I see older people. We see all different ages of people. And we all been around long enough, except some of the young, younger people. We know about sanctification. We know about what's right and what's wrong. Amen? Not everything has to be laid out on a platter for us to understand. Amen? We know how to survive in this world. Amen? And if you, you, if you know how to survive, we didn't get where we are by ourselves. Amen? So why do we, when it comes to God, we make it so difficult, like we don't understand English, amen? But we understand, when it, every, everything out there in the world, we understand, we can handle, we can deal with, but when it comes to God, uh, can you clarify that? Can you break that down? You know, and it's almost as plain as day. But even if you don't, understand. This is why we have the church. We have brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yes. Amen. This is why we have all of the different auxiliaries in the church to help us in so many ways. So there's no excuse. As they say in the world, ignorance of the law is no excuse. If they say that about the legal law, it's the same applies in God's law because there are Bibles, there are teachers, there are preachers. It's so many ways to get the information or to get an understanding of God's word. Amen? Amen. Let me move on. It, it, it's so interesting to break down God's word, because when you break it down, you can't help but try to explain so that, because God don't want no one to perish. Amen? That's what God's word says. And if you go to hell, he give us all free will. If you go to hell, you're going on your own accord. Because there's so many ways to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's no excuses. No one should leave this room today and not have a relationship with God. Amen. Because, see, there's no guarantee that you're going to make it back home. It's no guarantee that you're going to see tomorrow. The Bible tells us, give no thought for tomorrow. Because there's so many things to think about and worry about today. Amen? So, don't Go planning so much about tomorrow and next week and all of that. Choose this day who you will serve. Yeah, yeah. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Because I don't want to walk out this door, get in my truck, and then die on the way home. We've had people to, that that happened to. Amen. And so what we're trying to do is to make it so plain and clear. The Bible says, 
The word of God is so plain and clear that even what? Children, a child can understand. Amen? So there's no excuse, really, to say you don't understand because we got so much literature and so many people that can explain and break it down. Amen? Amen. Going on a little further. Paul goes on to say that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner. Because that the Lord is an avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. In other words, Paul is saying, don't take advantage of your brother or your sister. Amen? The Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. As a believer, a follower of Christ, we are not supposed to uh, take advantage of those that's less fortunate. Amen? If there's anything, we're supposed to try to help them. Amen? We know sometimes it's, it gets difficult and hard, but still, we're not supposed to take advantage of anyone. Amen? We're supposed to uh, pray for them. If we don't have what they need, maybe we can help them get to uh, where their needs may be met. There's so many organizations now that can help others. So many, uh, and not just helping people uh, financially, but we're talking about physically, spiritually, anyway. We're not supposed to take advantage of anyone. Amen? Amen. Going on a little further. It says in verse uh, 6, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, because that is the Lord, is the avenger of all such. And that's the last person you want to get vengeance on you. Amen? Especially when God is already on your side. We don't need to do that. God, uh, the Bible already tells us God will supply all of our needs. Amen? So we don't need to take advantage of others. Let that not be uh, put upon you as one, is, one of your faults in life. We all got faults. The Bible said we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right, right. But see, once we become Christians, we should uh, grow. We shouldn't remain the same way and doing the same things. Amen? We might commit new sins, but we're not supposed to keep doing the same over sins over and over, especially when you know better. Amen? You know right. The Bible tells us when we know to do right that we're supposed to do right. Amen? Because then when we don't do right, it becomes a sin. Going on a little further. It says here also in verse uh, 7, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. See, the Bible tells us, be ye holy, for I am holy. Holy means that we're supposed to start our best, trying to live right, do right, especially when we have the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because that, the Holy Spirit gives us that strength. He, he gives us whatever we need. God will supply it. The Bible says we have not because we what? Ask not. not. Amen. Amen. Going on a little further, it says, for God, verse 8, he therefore that despises, despises not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, see, we're supposed to love. Amen? That's one of our characteristics. We're supposed to be loved, have love within us. And when we show love to others, then they can see that God, the Christ, is in us, that we say we have. Amen? 
And indeed, ye do it towards all brethren, which are in, in Macedonia, in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. As we grow in the Lord, we're supposed to be increasing in not only faith, but in strength in all areas of our life. Amen? Because this is the purpose of God. Because we have the Holy Spirit. And verse 11 says, And that you study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Now, That, praise God, is a tough situation, but that applies to all of us. Amen? As a child of God, the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. Amen? See, we, God's people, we always say that we are blessed. We are supposed to be a blessing of others. Amen? We say God will supply all of our needs. God will. But at the same time, we're supposed to help others. As I look across the audience, I know a lot of people that have worked with me to help others. There were times we didn't charge nothing. We just did what we could because God had blessed us. Amen. That's where our blessings come from. Amen. When we are blessed, then we're supposed to turn around and bless others. Amen? And I thank God, praise God, for blessing us. Going on a little further, he said, you study to, be, study to be quiet and do your own business. The Bible talks about that. We're not supposed to be busybodies. We're not supposed to be into other people business unless we in it to help them. Amen? But not talking about them. Not trying to put them down, call them names. These are the characteristics of a Christian. A born again person. We're not supposed to be that way. And this is why Paul is telling the Thessalonians that we're not supposed to be that way. Amen? God bless. That I know steps on a lot of toes, but that's what God wants us to do. Preach the word. That's why we got to get right, church, and let's go home. Amen? If that's in your life, you need to gradually or quickly work on that area. Amen? Because that's not a characteristic of a child of God. Amen? The only time you're supposed to talk is when you're trying to help someone, when you're trying to lift them up. Amen? Going on a little further, it says, that we walk, verse 12, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have a light of nothing. But I would, let me go back to that because it says, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have a light of nothing. See, when you're supposed to do what you're supposed to do, then God will bless you yourself, that you will have light of nothing. But this is what Paul was teaching, not just the Thessalonians, but all of us. Amen? This is why some of us are being blessed, because we're turning around and blessing others as well. Amen? He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorry not, even as others which have no hope. Now, the question Paul turned to and to answer, he told them that they have, they don't, he don't want them to be ignorant, first of all. Amen? Concerning them that are asleep. Because the dead in Christ should be caught up in the air. When Jesus appeared, amen, they're going to be caught up first. See, they was thinking that they would never see their loved ones, that when Jesus comes, since this is the beginning of the rapture, that they would never see them. 
But Jesus is telling them, I don't want you to be ignorant. So this is what's going to happen. Amen? He goes on to say, for if you believe that Jesus died, see, as a believer, see, you're supposed to already believe God's word. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him in glory. Amen? Amen. So he don't want them to be ignorant. But I'm telling you now that you will see them again if they are in Christ. Amen? Amen. Remember, there's only two places, heaven or hell. But if they lived right and followed Christ, you will see them again in glory. Amen? If we believe that Jesus died Verse 15, I'm sorry. For this is that we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not pre prevent them which are asleep. They will be caught up in the sky with the Lord. And then he, verse 16, for the, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen? So your loved ones that have died and gone on, they will, if they are in Christ, be caught up. Amen? Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the what? Clouds. To meet the Lord. In the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's what we're looking forward to for. When Christ come back, all of us, amen? We're looking for that time to be with the Lord forever. If you are in Christ. And this is why we got to get right, church. Right. And let's go, let's go home. So that when he come back, we'll be ready to go back. Right. Amen? See, we can't just sit around and wait. No, we got to get right now yeah. while we have a chance because we might not have a chance again. And this is what he says finally. He says, wherefore, comfort one another with what? These words. See, if we're going to talk to somebody, this is what we're supposed to be talking about. We're supposed to be talking about the Lord. Amen? And what, he, what thus says the Lord. So we thank God today that we have this opportunity that we're not without Christ. And if we are without Christ, now is the chance to change your life. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen? So that when he comes, you will be ready. Amen? God bless you and God keep you. Man, would you stand with me, please? The call is twofold, as usual. For Christians, are we ready? Are we living the way we, we ought to live? Because he also says, Paul says in Ephesians, that we are to walk worthy of the calling wherewith God has called us. But I want to ask you today, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you cannot say beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're saved, we want to give you an opportunity to surrender to Christ. You can do it simply by where you stand. Just talk to him and say, God, I surrender my life to you. I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. And he promises that he would fulfill his part of the bargain. But we want to rejoice with you. We want to share with you. And so I want to invite you, if that's a desire of your heart, if you would step out from where you are and just make your way here to the front, we want to meet with you and share from God's word how you can be certain of your soul's salvation. And so as we sing, you come, would you? I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily.
sometimes you feel that tugging in your heart but you're resistant all the thoughts of what will change what will people say can I really live up to this and maybe that's what's going on in your heart right now but I want to say to you that until you surrender you won't have the power to do what you ought to do but God promises us that if we would trust him that he would give us the Holy Spirit who would help us let's sing that verse all to Jesus, all to Jesus I surrender, I surrender Lord, Lord I give myself to thee Father, we thank you so much today for the precious word of God that challenges us to be what you've called us to be, that the world would look upon us and see Christ through us. We pray now as we go forth from this place that we would share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with those with whom we come in contact. We ask that you would bless us now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide upon each and every heart. God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Greet somebody on your way out today. Have a blessed week. for watching First Baptist Church of College Hill online. I hope today's worship experience blessed you and would help you develop a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to stay connected with you and help you on your Christian journey. So if you're a guest, be sure to complete the connection card in the description. Join us for live online services every Sunday and visit our website fbcch.org to find out all of the latest news and events happening here at FBCCH. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss anything happening here at The Hill. And share this with a friend so we can bless them as well. Thank you again for watching. God bless you.